Welcome back. In this session, we are going to understand AWS account. This may sound like very simple or maybe you have one AWS account, but this is very complicated once you start working as a solution architect because you are going to manage and handle hundreds of AWS accounts. Let's go back in 2013 when I was working for one of the US telecom company. And that time we had only one account and in that account we were running around 300 applications and we had just three VPCs for the different environment. But nowadays companies are creating AWS account per application and per environment. So imagine for 300 applications, you need 900 accounts. And as a solution architect, you have to manage and handle all these accounts. So understanding AWS accounts is very, very important for you. So let's get started. What is AWS account? AWS account is a container. This is similar to other container where you put your stuffs, but this container is little bit different than your other container. Because in this container, you only create AWS resources. Now I have seen students are always confused between AWS resources and AWS services. So now understand what is AWS services first. AWS services are the product offered by Amazon Web Services to meet our cloud computing needs. What is cloud computing needs? Means we can go ahead, create a compute, a storage, database or many more services now, what is AWS resources? AWS resources are object or instance we create using AWS services. Now, let's understand this with an example. So, AWS has a service called EC2 Elastic Cloud Compute. As name suggests, using this service, you can create a compute resource and this is called virtual machine. So here EC2 is a service and this virtual machine is a resource. Take another example. Again, AWS has another service called S3, simple storage service. As name suggests, this is a storage service. So using this service, you can create a bucket. This is called S3 bucket. And in this bucket, you can store your data. So here S3 is a service and this bucket is the object or you can say this is a resource. So in this AWS account, we can create AWS resources. Now, other than AWS resources, we create one more thing in our AWS account and this is called identity. And this identity is nothing but a user who access this AWS account. What does it mean this person access this account? So when he access this account, so using this AWS services, he create AWS resources. So by now you must understood this user is no one bus. He is either cloud engineer or cloud architect. So to summarize, AWS account is a container and in this container, we create AWS resources or AWS identity. So in AWS account, we do only two things. Either you create AWS resources or you create AWS identity. Now, to create this AWS account, we need three things. First things we need name. Second, we need email ID. Third, we need credit card. Now let's understand one by one. What is name? Name is unique identifier of your AWS account. So when you have the one AWS account, so it's fine. You can go ahead, give any name. 
but when you have and you have to manage hundreds of AWS account as a solution architect, then this naming convention and naming is very, very important. So different company uses different naming convention, but here I'm going to tell you what naming convention you should use and maybe you can find to win as per your needs and the customer needs. So you know, in this course, we have a company called Epic Book. Epic Book. And this company has two products. One is e-commerce platform that's called a store. And another is blogging platform. So we know for this company, Epic Book, we are going to create AWS infrastructure and also we are going to manage it. So to create AWS infrastructure and this resource says we need AWS account, right? So how do we name this AWS account? So we need to understand firstly, we have the company name and company has a product and we have the two product. Now again, we need to understand this store product and blog store, how many environment they are running. So after talking with the product owner, we come to know they have the development environment. They have the QA environment for the e-commerce. Also, they have the production environment. Whereas for the blogging, they have only the environment and the production environment. Okay. Now we know the environment. Now what we can do, you can use this naming convention like company name hyphen product name hyphen environment so we know we have the epic book so naming convention will be epic book then a store then environment so this could be the name of our dev account and again epic book a store then qa and similar epic book a store then cloud and same goes for the blog as well now you know if you have the hundreds of the account how this naming convention will be followed and how easy it will be to identify this aws account and let me tell you from my experience i have seen a customer they have the account they don't follow the naming convention they maintain the excel sheets or maybe in confluence space this account number and just a name and it become very very difficult to look and access this account so when you are working as a solution architect you should follow all these best practices now second things we need to create aws account is unique email id why do we need this unique email id this Unique email ID is again identifier of your AWS account that facilitate communication such as account activation, service notification and billing information. So when we create AWS account using this unique email ID, AWS creates a account root user for your AWS account and this root user is an identity for your AWS account. So when we create this account, then this AWS account has nothing, just one identity, one identity, this root user and couple of points you need to understand about this root user. This root user is more powerful identity in your AWS account and he has access of everything in your AWS account. What does it mean? It means you have to ensure this root user credentials you store at the very secure place because if X, Y, Z reason you lost or maybe this user credentials get compromised, then there will be the disaster. What could be a disaster? There is a couple of disaster. Let me give you two examples. One example, and in this account, let's assume you are running a production application. So this bad guy who got access of this account 
he will go and delete all the resources what you have in this AWS account or maybe he will transfer data from this account to maybe other AWS account so you will lost your production application and production data second disaster could be he can go and create a AWS resources and that could cost thousand dollar per hour and yes there are AWS resources that you can create and that cost a thousand dollar per hour so again here if you notice while creating this account you have your credit card and you will be paying those bills now let's understand why do we need this credit card so when you create this AWS account so we need this credit card for the billing purpose so all the cost that will be incurred within this AWS account this will be charged from this credit card one thing keep in mind in this course when you are going to do the hands-on work on the project then you are going to use AWS free tier services so ideally you won't get charged on your credit card but if XYZ reason or maybe intentional or unintentional you will create AWS services that don't fall into AWS free tier then AWS going to charge from your credit card and AWS needs way to recover their money so that's why our credit card is attached there many times students ask Ravid though we are going to use AWS free tier service and AWS offers free tier service do we really need to attach our credit card yes you cannot create AWS account without this credit card and this is mandatory to give a name of your account use unique email ID and use credit card to create your account so to summarize to create your account you need a name you need a unique email ID and this unique email ID going to be used to create a account root user and one thing to remember each AWS account has only one root user and again this root user is most powerful user in your AWS account and then you need a credit card now we will be talk about the security of this AWS account so as I said this root user is most powerful identity in AWS account and he has full access of this AWS account it means even you cannot restrict access of this AWS account for this user there's no way to restrict there is no way to restrict access of this root user to this AWS account so you should not use this root user for your day-to-day -day activity then what should you do so there is another AWS service called IAM identity and access management service and using this service you can create another IAM user and this user you can use for your day-to-day -day activity so when you create a IAM user so this user by default don't have access of anything to your AWS account by default you don't have access of anything in AWS account this is completely opposite when we create our AWS account and using our unique email ID so root user has full access of AWS account but when you use IAM to create a user for your AWS account this user don't have access of anything and you have to go and manually add the permission using the policy to give him access of AWS account and IAM is a very detailed topic and the service I'm going to cover sometime in the course so now you understand you should not use your root user for your day-to-day -day activity you should go ahead create a IAM user and to this IAM user you should give even admin access administrator access for your day-to-day -day activity now before we end this session let me tell you very important things 
I am also certified to do AWS well architected review. And when I do AWS well architected review, and one thing I have always noticed, and I will tell you even 70% times, most of the customer they keep using their AWS root user, and this is not allowed at all. So when I create a report, and a report has three sections. One is what is best practice they are following. Second is what is medium risk and third is what is high risk. So if they are using this root user for the day to day activity, then it falls into high risk area. So imagine how important this is. And again, this is very important question for your AWS solution architect associate. So do remember. Well, now let's summarize what we have covered in this session. So in this session, first of all, we understood what is AWS account? So AWS account is a container. In this container, we create AWS resources and a AWS identity. Now to create AWS account, we need three things. First, we need a name. Second, we need a unique email ID. Third, we need a credit card. Naming convention is very, very important. You should follow because as a solution architect, you are going to manage hundreds of AWS account. Using your unique email ID, AWS creates a root user for you. And this, this root user is very powerful identity in your AWS account. You should not use for your day-to-day -day purpose. Instead, using your IAM service, you should create a IAM user. And this IAM user, you should use for your day-to-day -day activity. So that's all I wanted to cover in this session. Thanks a lot for joining me. See you in the next session.